Hey, Rachel, how are you going? I'm good, Tammy. How are you? Very good. So um, I first met you as my uh, lecturer in nutritional biochem. Uh, yeah. Since then, I've loved watching uh, everything you do, like many of us in the profession. And uh, as soon as this new um, opportunity to, to talk to you about uh, some pathways that are near and dear to my heart uh, came up, I was like, yes, can we have a chat? Absolutely. It, look, it is exciting because that was a long time ago that I was teaching you. And, and I think that my kind of knowledge building since then has been quite intense because obviously like you I was like oh this, this is of high value this is of high value to me as a clinician I like numbers uh not scary mathematical nerd numbers I like the objectivity that results give us I like the certainty that results give us and so I just really have pursued that line of knowledge and skill building ever since then. And then kind of came to a point where I thought, how can we, like you said, kind of create a clearer path for people? Because I hear a lot of disgruntlement in terms of people leaving their qualifications and saying, yeah, we did a unit on pathology, but can't say I actually got pathology results in my hot little hand or that now that I'm out in practice when I do get them in my hot little hand that I really can make sense of those and I feel like I'm missing the meaning here and so I was like okay well you may have done a unit in your training but we all know that there are strengths and limitations to the way that's delivered and there's a lot that isn't very practical. It's not immediately accessible and relevant to everyday naturopathic practice. And so I was like, well, what does that look like? You know, I, after 20 years of working in this space and working in diagnostics at a really sophisticated level, I was like, okay, well, what's the simple? Like, let's not go to the nth degree of the most complex kind of pathology patterns let's come back and make sure that those fundamental skills and concepts are in place for all of us and absolutely that, that's really where it came from yeah yeah because it's not every day that you get that um crazy yeah complex you know one in a gazillion type of uh, person sitting in front of you but it is on the weekly that you're getting somebody that isn't empowered by the uh, pathology re results that their um, healthcare practitioner has given them and isn't even aware what those mean or if they're in a healthy range or um, if that healthy range is actually optimal specifically for us in our profession. Yeah, that's right. And, and look, the reality is, and you've just touched on it there, I mean, the people who are in the position of being the gatekeepers for pathology I mean, a lot of them will tell you very honestly that they feel incredibly ill-equipped to actually read and interpret the results that come out, except in emergency medicine contexts. And so they'll say, well, I don't know where the reference range comes from. I'm guessing it's scientific and robust. But part of the things that we talk about is just demystifying that and saying, look, some reference ranges are that the pathology lab are going to give you are really in, important. You wouldn't deviate from that, say with autoantibodies or something like mm, that. Mm. So lab specific. specificity. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And so you can't beg to differ about their decision limit when it comes to autoantibodies and say, oh, no, uh, my other lab says differently. Um, but, but obviously, you know, just by lifting the lid on where reference ranges come from for each uh, of the main kind of panels and parameters so that we're empowered to say, oh, for these results, I really understand why someone needs to be at the bottom or some of that range or why someone needs to be bang in the middle or, you know, so on and so forth. Or in fact, mm. the range is nonsense 
and um, you know we've given you the uh, research to support what the real range should be and we've also you know in the um, RAND student pathology hub given patient uh, given the practitioners the template for interpreting those labs and you know all sorts of other tools. The other thing I find really interesting about uh, the RAN um, Student Pathology Hub is that you haven't just covered, you know, the good old cheat sheet. You've you've really taken it into the space of being able to confidently approach um, other healthcare providers and healthcare mm -hmm. practitioners, uh, particularly those gatekeepers, um, with professional uh, with a professional level of communication and how to how to graciously do that you've given the big whys on why we can't just get the a to z panels and go and get our clients to go and get them from the doctors anymore and um it's a really great step by step into understanding the behind the scenes of what's actually happening and we we just didn't get taught that at um the qualification level that we've got yeah, look, I, I'm so pleased to hear you say that. And it means a lot that you see the value in it and you think that it makes sense. I mean, one of the things that I did in creating this was I thought long and hard, literally about those stepping stones. It was like, well, hang on, you know, what's first, what's second, what's third? And those things all come up. Oh, how do I graciously, without overstepping my role and my position, uh, make suggestions about investigations, you know, say in the instance where the doctor's only assessing a patient's iron by just doing ferritin as a standalone marker. And you're thinking, well, even the RCPA <laughs> and the RACGP says don't do that, you know. Um, so how do I communicate that? And so we do go into things like that. And we also talk about those things that come up really commonly like when you do have a difference of opinion and and how to again graciously respectfully deal with that so that you build friends not foes out there uh, amongst our colleagues who come from a different background and really who who you know ultimately can be of enormous value to our patients when there is genuine collaboration and and shared care so we did we went into the kind of as you say the the bigger picture of what it means to use pathology in your practice it's not just a cheat sheet and saying oh that's a sweet number for ferritin that's a sweet number for uh you know urea we went many many steps further than that I record a little video for each module where couldn't help myself Tammy you know that was a little video original. you've got eight hours worth of content uh, in there some of it's just my oh, it, I just love you ripping on your um on your pathways and <laughs> uh, and how, how but how that relates clinically that's one of the most powerful things that you do is um be able to um distill uh, really complex ideas into such an easy to understand and memorable way especially you know your your discussion on iron studies in there and it's one of the things we come across so often as practitioners and you know the <laughs> your metaphors and examples are, are things that are going to stick with um, practitioners all the way through so it's it's really great oh it's so good look we, yeah i i've had a lot of um time to refine those kind of metaphors and to think about translating because, mm, because that's a great word we, mm. we we look at you know I'm reading Mosby's for fun um <laughs> and I love the primary research but actually it's not accessible to most people and particularly if we stay within that kind of language around it also we can't explain it to patients because we just go yeah oh, page 714 of Mosby's look have a read I mean it, it just doesn't <laughs> work so we have to make characters uh, out of the parameters to some extent we have to bring them to life as kind of char caricatures a lot of the time and really create a story there that honestly reflects the science beautifully you know I like I say we work I work really hard on making sure that they're good 
robust metaphors, but at the same time, like you say, really stick with us. And we go, this hasn't, you know, this is no longer something abstract that I have to work really hard to remember what on earth that means. That's right. It's not a Krebs cycle, for instance. No, thank God. (laughs) You know, that's one of the few things, Tammy, I actually have printed up and on my clinic wall because I'm like, I decide not to recall that. Um, (laughs) There's only so much bandwidth. We all have in our brains for so much. That's right. So, you know, when instead we're talking about these... uh, colorful stories and as you've seen in the hub the visual resources um are exquisite that i i can't lay any claim to fame for those Mm -hmm. there there were my from my team member sally who does an extraordinary job at creating the visuals that go with this that i think will just really make this second nature for people where they feel Mm -hmm. comfortable even showing some of those visuals to their patients oh look this is what we're actually talking about Um, absolutely and I love that you've um, covered all the different learning styles in there you know you've obviously got your um, excellent and well-researched powerpoints and presentations so there's the visual elements there there's the auditory stuff where you've actually given some bonus um, audio stuff there you've got cheat sheets you've got um, the resources that I have acquired over like you know four years of my first uni degree in laboratory science then seven years after that working in different laboratories and things you've got it all in one spot for people to just literally step by step go through and connect with all the right laboratories with all the right parameters with all the resources that are out there generally for the integrative medicine practitioners and now you know right in one spot they don't have to go and do any research whatsoever you've just done it all for them and then those beautiful graphics and everything it's um, a really comprehensive hub for people to go back to time and time again. It's really impressive. Oh, that's so wonderful. Look, yeah, it's, it's so exciting to see this come together at last and to be able to have sifted through our enormous work over 20 years in this space and go, yeah, what is the best of that? What's the mm. best and what is the most essential and trying not to put extraneous stuff in there that creates too much theory that isn't essential you know Mm. just really bringing back to people this firm sense that they have got this this isn't I think I think that's the thing sometimes with pathology particularly if we didn't receive any training in our undergrad or the training wasn't good I think sometimes we personalise that and we, oh, I'm not going to get this. This is not really a me thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think people sell themselves short because when it's delivered in an accessible fashion like this, everybody gets it. They go, Mm -hmm. oh, no, I totally get renal market. Oh, no, I totally get why celiac disease should be assessed, step one, two, three, four. Now I make, you know, I can really uh, make good of all that information and I'm not even breaking into a sweat. Yeah, absolutely. And you can confidently deliver that information and that information actually comes across as empowering for the client, not bamboozling for yourself and for them. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. Um, so... I've got a sneaky question though. I was Go like, for it. Oh, oh my goodness, there's so much goodness in here. God, gosh, that's the newest update I haven't heard about that. No, oh, there's all this other stuff. What about your your little side loves of you know good old zinc and cortisol yeah. and these other tricky ones? If I really wanted to come in and have a look a bit further, a bit deeper into that stuff, um, yeah. I I think you've got something else. What else have you got behind the scenes there? Well, I've got kind of several different offerings really I mean we created and delivered the master course in comprehensive diagnostics which is I don't know it's like the equivalent of Mosby's but for integrative health so there's it isn't just this trimmed back stepping stone sort of approach it absolutely is a deep dive into the routine labs um so we delivered that a couple of years ago and I'm extremely proud of that and prackies who want to deep dive um deep dive into that particular program uh which they can do 
at their own pace and speed now that we're no longer running that live. And, and we certainly had amazing feedback from that. There are lots of, I mean, like you say, I mean, but what about, and oh, I wanted to hear you talk about zinc and I wanted to hear you talk about cortisol. And of course, the list is kind of infinite. There was a lot of tough competition about. What <laughs> That's what I mean. It's like, here. how do we choose the best content? <laughs> yeah. So how we chose them, of course, was just what do we see every single day? What do we Great, see every it. single day? Uh, B12, iron, <laughs> you know, anemia, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, so those are the things that I would call kind of second line investigations a lot of the time, like cortisol is unlikely to be ordered as a first line assessment. It would be a second line, fairly sophisticated uh, follow up investigation that somebody's referred for. Um, that didn't make the cut for the student pathology lab. But we, I do cover that. Like if you go onto my website um, and you put in the search term um, cortisol, you will see, and you search the catalog, you'll see, you know, I did a um, update and under 30 episode on that maybe last year called Capturing Cortisol. So I, I've certainly done discrete recordings on a lot of different parameters. So people can get the basics, whether they're, it's via the RAN Student Pathology Hub or whether it's via the deep dive into the master course, and they're still going to be able to answer more nuanced questions about other tests. Probably we have those in discrete recordings somewhere on offer on the website of course I haven't recorded something about everything thank god <laughs> I, oh, I, do know, I do know that you love a little bit about everything so it's, it's quite exciting to be able to dabble into uh, the 30 and 30 library that you've got as yeah. well so yeah yeah so but but I would just say to people you know at this point in time that's a gold mine if you've got a particular test um, or a pathology question that isn't answered by these to the hub or the, the master course in comprehensive diagnostics, then just searching for that on the website might bring you some joy because it's quite likely that I have recorded something on that, either an update in under 30 episode or another offering. Yeah. Beautiful. I love it. So the other um, thing I love about it, and there's so many things to love, is the price point. Holy dooly, you have made it so accessible for any student. Um, two, two mini coffees or a very fancy turmeric latte, as it says, <laughs> a, a month. Or um, for a cheap textbook, you can actually get the whole 12 modules, which is you know, that's a game changer. There's so many things out there, uh, especially I've seen um, in the uh, overseas market that are a lot more than that when mm. we're thinking about it. It's probably even cheaper than the new Mosby's, to be honest. It is. Uh, and, it, <laughs> and, and it's um, just so clinically relevant and can be used every day. So it's um, really cool to see that too. Yeah, that was a very... That was part of the whole design, and I'm sure you're not surprised to hear that because for me, you know, if, if I could change the world, Tani, uh, and when I say that I mean the <laughs> naturopathic world, it would be that every naturopath, nutritionist, herbalist has done these fundamental modules because if we were just on the same page, with these most uh, in-demand lab interpretation skills, uh, we'd be kicking a whole lot of goals out there that are in addition to the goals that we're currently kicking, but it would really raise our credibility, it would raise our profile, and it would absolutely improve our, our success stories um, with our patients. And so this was really so intentional. I went, you know, I want everybody to access this. I really want this to go as far and wide as it possibly can. And I certainly don't want price to be a barrier. So hence why, you know, at the cost, at the price of a very, um, I don't know, activated almond turmeric latte uh, subscription fee, we thought, yeah, that's, that's about it. We just want everybody to um, have the exposure. I love it. And it's 
um, a really valued mission um, to have because I've seen how it can really make or break one of those uh, relationships, really important relationships with the healthcare village that looks after a client mm. when we're all on the same page and we can mm. all respectfully discuss something that is so important in the health journey of a client and the relationship with the client by empowering not only ourselves with the numbers but empowering our clients with the numbers mm. and uh, and knowing what all that's about I think it's a really incredible thing and it, and yeah a, a great leverage point to lift the whole profession I think it's amazing mm. well you, I mean, you and I have been on the same page, as you say, for a very long time now in that regard. So it's just kind of opening our arms wider and trying to bring more into the fold, I think. And, and it's exciting to see how many more people are in that mindset where they're saying, I don't know how I practiced before. I don't know, uh, you know, why it had to be so hard because it's not that hard. And now, my understanding is top notch. My outcomes are better. My relationships with GPs are better because I really get the bigger picture and I get yeah. the bigger picture for them as much as I do for me. Yeah. And my clients. Mm. Mm, beautiful. Awesome. So um, I, somewhere around this recording, you'll be able to see the link to, um, to Rachel's uh student pathology hub and everything else that is um there and using that search bar is so important if you are considering hmm, something in here just sparked something in me go and use the search bar it's really important to be able to find your own answers for things as well um but it's been great to talk to you today rachel thank you so much i'm really excited and i hope that uh so many people can uh go and check out the student pathology hub uh and and the other thing is it's not just for students uh i Hi. found i you know i've been in it a decade and seriously there is um the up-to-date and um you know recent research that you uh you know refer back to in some of the the trainings i hadn't heard of so i'm really excited for practitioners who have even been in for a while to really um notch up those uh those skills as well yeah, thank you. That's what we're hearing across the board. It's really wonderful. Awesome. Thanks again, Rach. Thanks so much, Tammy.